Today is 25th of January, which means it's Burns Night. And when it's Burns Night, it means that people are having burnt supper. A lot of people go out and have it at like a, an actual establishment because like a proper burnt supper is supposed to have a, a piper and you know someone is supposed to be reciting Robert Burns's poems and all that. But we just thought that we would have a little burnt supper at home tonight, and we're kind of taking you around to show you what we need for it, and then at home we'll show you how we're making some of the traditional Scottish food and also we'll show you how we're eating it and loving it. If you don't know who Robert Burns is, because my sister, for example, has no idea who Robert Burns is uh, and I'm partially making this video because she told me she had no idea. So yeah, Robert Burns is one of the classic romantic poets. He's a Scot and he's kind of like a Scottish equivalent of Lord Byron or if you're Czech, he's the Scottish equivalent of Karel Hinek Maka. If you're not Czech, then Karel Hinek Maka, Maka is the Czech Lord Byron. <laughs> a proper burn supper starts with like coming to a place and being welcomed by a person playing bagpipes. So for a starter, during a burn supper, you generally get a type one of one of the three typical Scottish soups, either a Scotch broth or Callan King, which is like a smoked haddock chowder-ish situation or kokaliki which has the best name ever and as you probably you know can decipher if you know your mind is not in a gutter uh, it's a soup made out of chicken and leek there you go then for the main course you get the haggis nibs and patties uh, which is yeah it's haggis and potatoes and turnips nibs is turnips uh, during the traditional burnt supper, someone brings in like a big haggis and then people kind of stand around it and recite poems and then they open it up and they eat it with all the trimmings and for dessert you sometimes get Scottish cheeses and sometimes you get one of the typical Scottish desserts which uh, can either be like a whiskey-ish trifle sort of thing or a cranachan which we're going to be trying to make tonight. Uh, it's also boozy, it also has whiskey in it, it has raspberries and oats and whipping cream and I don't think I've ever had it. Maybe I had a like a variation on it, but I definitely never tried to make my own, so uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm also going to try and make Simon recite a poem for us in his best Scottish accent. That's going to be super hot. So now we're going to go have a look around the shops here in the Edinburgh city centre to see who can who can give us the best, the most amazing is looking haggis and raspberries? And then we're gonna go home and cook something. So we're home now and the cat is getting into our pants. Uh, well, he's in there, so... Doesn't matter. Oh well. We're home now and I'm gonna show you what we got. We actually got quite a... quite a haul. Yeah, I never do like cosmetics hauls, but I will do Haggis haul. Yes! We did not find any soup that would be very Scottish, so instead we went for some oat cakes and some Scottish salmon, because to me salmon is a very Scottish thing. And this one is actually from the limited edition Taste of Scotland and it's also smoked with malt whiskey. Mm. Uh, we also got some lumpfish caviar. Uh, it's not very Scottish but I just really like the word lumpfish so... Is lumpfish like the blobfish? Probably no not. No idea. But it would be great. Then for the main, obviously we're having haggis. We have this kind of small one. It's like four pounds or something. You can see this is how, this is what haggis looks like. Obviously 
You can tell that this one doesn't come encased in a proper lamb or sheep stomach as it should but you can also like you can buy a fancy one that does uh, it's supposed to be for three people we're gonna eat it in two you can see that it's all in red so it's not healthy at all but yeah no if regrets you're, <laughs> if you're a vegetarian you can get this in veggie version which I love I maybe even prefer it because it just doesn't make me feel so bad but for <laughs> For tonight, we had to have the real deal. Uh, for sides, for like neeps and tatties. So for tatties, we have this ultimate mash, and for neeps, we have this sweet mash. We unfortunately couldn't find an actual turnip. They had it like three days ago when we went to the shop, they had a turnip, but they didn't have them anymore. For dessert, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be making in Cranachan. I'm already soaking these oats in whiskey. In the recipe I found, they said that you should soak some oats in whiskey for a couple of hours or overnight and then make, you know, layers out of that. Uh, some other recipes kind of suggested that you're supposed to toast the oats and kind of make this granola sort of substance and then mix that with the cream, which is another thing. Uh, you use double cream and ideally you whip it, but I think we're just gonna use it unwhipped because we have small glasses. This is... Uh, Kranachan is generally served in glasses, either these or, you know, on, on stems, either way. Either way, something that kind of makes you feel like you're drinking whiskey. We are using this one. This is the only whiskey we have right now, if Simon is okay with it. No problem. Oh, <laughs> no problem. That was kind of misleading for a bit. I don't drink whiskey. So I'm gonna go with the Edinburgh gin, which is delicious. Then we have some raspberries. Unfortunately, they're not Scottish, they're South African, but I can't even say close enough. No. And honey, that's the last thing that needs to go into a proper Kranachan. Uh, I also found some shortbread, which if you, if you know at least anything about Scotland, you know that uh, shortbread is like our national biscuit. Uh, this one looked super fancy, but they also have some more basic ones, like these mini uh, shortbread fingers. I pretty much only bought these because I want to take them to Japan as a little omiyage. They are not too expensive, but they're very Scottish, so it's gonna be great. And yeah, I think that now we're gonna try and make the Kronachans first to, you know, let them settle a bit, and then we're gonna make dinner. Actually, uh, you can put haggis in the microwave the thing is that obviously you know if you, if you put it in the oven you're gonna have like a more proper you know traditional experience but to be fair it takes about two hours longer if you cook it in the oven it's about seven minutes in the microwave and two hours in the oven so yeah we we made our decision of you know instant gratification by haggis my love yon lilac fair me purple blossoms to the spring and i a bird to shelter there when wearied on my little wing how i would mourn when it was torn by autumn wild and winter root but i would sing on wanton wing when youthful may its bloom renewed o oh, gin my love where yon red rose that grows upon the castle wa and i myself a drop of dew and to her bonny breast fa O oh, there beyond expression bless, I'd feast on beauty o' the night, sealed on her silk soft folds to rest, till flayed o'er by Phoebus' light. <laughs> 